It's no secret that humans are incredibly bad at generating passwords. In fact, we're so bad at it, we invented software to help us manage them. Fortunately, randomly generating passwords and storing them in a password manager is actually a very good thing. But with so many options out there, which one should you choose? You could use one provided by your browser, such as Firefox or Chrome, or you could use one from a dedicated service, such as LastPass, Dashlane, or Bitwarden. Now, some of these are pretty good, but they usually involve a fee, and there's always the risk that they may one day get hacked. For me, I like to keep it simple, which, according to the acronym, makes me stupid. That may be the case, but I just prefer my password management solutions to have not been hacked. Therefore, I use Password Store, also known as Pass. And for me, well, it's pretty much perfect, especially as I like to live in the terminal. However, Pass isn't for everyone. It does require some technical understanding and the ability to work with command line tools. If that sounds like you, however, then Pass may be perfect. To get started, you'll need to install Password Store on your system. You can do this on macOS using Brew, and on Linux, whatever package manager your distro uses. I'm using Arch, by the way, so I'll install using Pacman. With Pass installed, the next thing we need to do is a little bit of cryptography. Don't worry, this is pretty easy. Password Store uses GPG under the hood to encrypt passwords. Therefore, we need to generate a key pair for use with it. This gives us control over our own password data, but it does mean you have to be responsible for this key. So make sure you have it backed up somewhere safe and ideally remote. You can use an existing key pair if you already have one generated. If not, you can run the gpg gen key command to generate a new one. After running that command, you'll be prompted for some identity information. You can either give your real identity or make something up. After that, you'll then be prompted to enter in a password. This is the master password for the key and you wanna make sure that this is something memorable. Once that's done, GPG will list out a confirmation, including the ID of the key you just generated. Make sure to keep a note of this because we'll need it in a minute. You can always get this back by typing in GPG with the uppercase K flag. One thing you may have noticed is that our key has an expiration date. Don't worry, we can always change this at a later point. But if you are worried, you can change it by going to the edit key menu using GPG edit key, then calling the expire command on the key and setting it to never expire, which is option zero. Then type save when you're done. Now we can run the pass init command with our GPG key ID that we copied from before to initialize a new password store. Once that's done, the next command to run is pass git init. This will go ahead and turn our password store into a git repository, which if you know git, gives us a lot of features. So now we have our password repo initialized. Let's go ahead and add a password. We can do this by using the pass insert command and giving our password a name. In this example, we're adding a new password called GitHub. After pressing enter, a prompt will appear and we can enter our password's value. Pass will make us enter it again to make sure it's correct. On the other hand, if we just want to generate a brand new password, we can do so using the pass generate command, which will generate a really secure password and insert it for us. As you can see, it's pretty easy to both insert and generate passwords using the CLI. However, I actually don't like the way we've organized these passwords. To me, there's a better way to do it. Under the hood, password store is file-based. That means we can organize our passwords as we would in a file system. By entering the following command of pass generate github slash personal, pass will create a directory in our store called github, which will then contain a file of our encrypted password called personal. This allows us to effectively namespace passwords by the GitHub directory, which is useful if say we have another account that we use for work. You can also nest directories as well, just like you would with any other file system. Organizing this way works really nicely when we want to use the find command, where we can use it to search for all passwords given a search string. For example, I can search for all of my GitHub passwords using pass find. Oh, probably also worth mentioning, if you just type in pass, it'll show you all of the passwords you currently have in your store. Another really nice feature is that Pass has auto completion for Bash, Zshell, and Fish. You may need to set this up in your DOF files, but for me, it worked out of the box. If you're observant, you may have noticed that I'm not using my email address as the secret name, and that's intentional. If you remember, Pass uses the file system under the hood, which means the password name is used as the file name. Because the file name is viewable and we'll be storing this in a GitHub repo, 
If we were to use the email as the file name, then this would leak credentials, which is never good from a security perspective. But what if we want to store our email with our password? Pass allows you to store metadata by adding it as additional lines in the file. We can type in pass edit github slash personal and a text editor will open up where we can make changes, both to our password, but also to add any metadata. To add metadata, we just add it as a new line underneath the password. This allows us to store additional information such as the email address associated with that password, and it'll be encrypted as well. Now I know what you're thinking. What if you can't remember what file name you used for each password? Say you were in a rush and created two files, personal and personal two. Look, I get it, it happens. I'm no stranger to making poor decisions either. Fortunately, password store has you covered. You can just use the pass grep command to search for the password you want. This allows you to use grep queries across your encrypted file data, which is pretty powerful. For example, if you're not even sure what the email is that you're looking for, well, you can just use grep for the metadata field as well, provided you've attempted to organize somewhat. This is actually a good segue into how to get passwords out of password store. Well, we can do this using the pass show command, which will print the entire file to std out. A better approach, however, is to use the hyphen C flag, which will copy the first line straight into our clipboard and won't display anything, which is obviously more secure, especially if you have somebody watching over your shoulder. Okay, so what about if you want to remove passwords? Well, remember the top level passwords we created earlier? Let's go ahead and delete them. We can do so using the pass rm command, which will remove it from our store. Ah, shoot, I removed the wrong one. Well, that's okay. Remember, our password store is backed by a Git repository, so we never truly lose that information, provided we don't do anything stupid. Let's revert that change I just made. We can use Git commands for our password store by just prefixing the command with the pass keyword. So if we want to check the commit history of our store, we can do so by typing pass git log. The commit we want to revert is our current head, so let's use the git revert command. Okay, that should be all we need. Now if we type in pass, we should see our password has returned. Nice. Whilst we're playing around with Git, we may as well set up a remote repo, which provides a couple of benefits. The first is that it serves as a backup for our password store. And the second is it allows us to easily download it onto other devices. Okay, let's add a remote to our pass repo so we can push it up and keep it safe. This is done using the same git command of git remote add origin. Once that's done, let's push it up using pass git push origin main. Finally, let's round this video off by loading our passwords onto another machine. Okay, so now I'm on my MacBook. Let's go and clone our password store. Okay, with that done, let's check if our password store works on this machine. We'll do so by using pass show github slash personal. Ah, right, this machine doesn't have the private key in order to decrypt the passwords. Let's go ahead and fix that. Heading back on over to our Linux machine, we need to export both the public and private parts of our key. We can first export the public key by typing in the following export command. This command outputs to a file called public.gpg in an armored format, which is basically base64. Notice that we're specifying our key by its associated email rather than the ID. You can use this email instead of the ID for referencing which key you want to choose. Exporting the private key is pretty much the same, except for we specify a different file name and we use the export secret key command instead. We'll also need to enter our private key's password here as well. With that done, we can head back over to our other machine. Now that I'm on my Mac, I can transfer the keys over using SSH via SCP. Once that's completed, we'll first add in the private key using the gpg import command pointing it at our private key file. This will prompt us to add in our password for the private key file, which is the same as the master password we set earlier. After that, we can then import our public key by using the same gpg import command. Now we should be able to run our pass show command and successfully see our password's value. One last thing, you'll need to up the trust level of the public key in order to encrypt new passwords on this machine. To do that, you just need to use the gpg edit key command on our key and call the trust function inside. We'll then assign the maximum value of trust to this key, which is level five. That covers the basic usage of pass, but I mentioned before I'd show some ways how I integrate it into my workflow when dealing with passwords more securely. 
The first approach is for setting environment variables, which can easily be done using the export command. This prevents accidentally pasting the secret key into your terminal session, which is a pretty bad thing to do, as it can stay in your shell history file for a long time if you do it incorrectly. The second way I use pass is to secure any CLI commands that require an API token. By creating an alias, you can set any access credentials as part of that command, which allows you to use the CLI tools that require authentication automatically, which is much more secure than keeping them stored in a file. As well as being useful in the terminal, pass is also accessible from outside of it. This is due in part to the large and active community that Password Store has. Because of this, we have plugins for browsers such as Firefox and Chrome, graphical user interfaces for all major operating systems, apps for mobile devices such as Android and iOS, and additional plugins that bring even more functionality. All of this makes Pass a viable password management solution. However, I believe the biggest hurdle is managing your own encryption keys, which is probably too much responsibility for most people. If you're like me, however, and really value self-custody, and you're a bit of a goblin for the terminal, then Password Store may just be perfect.